While spooky season has officially begun, we still have one thing left from September to talk about. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another book haul, this time for September of 2023, guys. It's one of the biggest that I think I've ever done on this channel. So uh, people got very, very happy this month with all the things they wanted to uh, put some postage on and send my way. And I'm excited to talk about all these things. But before we do, guys, we got to do like usual and talk about those books that count. Say it with me now, digital purchases. Uh, guys, I did get up a couple here talking about all of these spooky season reads and getting a lot of recommendations in that TBR that I did. Uh, I picked up a few more books. Now, I am reading Little Heaven right now by Nick Cutter. I read The Troop last year, and I'm really enjoying both. I already have The Deep, so I went back and I said, hey, what's one that I missed? Well, that is The Acolyte. So I went ahead and picked up The Acolyte by Nick Cutter because uh, so far, one and a half books in, I am very, very excited about this author. I feel like he gets what I love about horror, and he's writing things in a way that I really, really am enjoying. So, uh, yeah, I feel like it's easy. going to be two for two. I don't I don't see any way that Little Heaven is going to drop the ball. I say that now, and I feel like I could be cursing it. But I'm about halfway through it right now, and it feels like I'm just loving every bit of it. I'm thinking I'm going to like it more than I like the truth. So I'm excited to continue with Mr. Nick Cutter. Black Mouth by Ronald Malfi. This is one that I got recommended a lot when I talked to Rachel over on Shades of Orange. And of course, uh, Malfi has come up a ton in, uh, the, in that spooky season TBR video. Uh, people who are like, why are you not having Ronald Malfi on here? This is kind of like a late bloomer. I kind of had that list locked for a few months and I didn't feel like I had any more room for it. But guys, you're in luck. I plan on moving some horror into the regular rotation now, not saving everything for October. So I could see myself picking up some Malfi sometime in the spring, because that's when I plan to read The Deep by Nick Cutter. And one more horror tidbit here, guys. Grady Hendrix is one who comes up a lot, and I have my best friend's exorcism. This is one that I just, I was intrigued just by the cover alone. It looks like a VHS tape. That's always a lot of fun to us Gen Xers. We get a big kick out of that. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I just feel like this one's come highly recommended by a lot of people who not only like the kind of st the style of horror that I like, but they also uh, know the type of things that us Gen Xers really do like. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all aboard for that. So Grady Hendrix is one that just seems like all of his books almost seem like this is kind of like that fun throwback to horror and that's uh that's something i'm always going to be interested in so that's why i did pick up three horror books this month for the good old kindle and uh yeah we'll be like i said uh it's going to be more than just in october going forward so i'm happy to get a uh, horror more into the regular rotation here got a couple of physical purchases this month and one of them was very expensive so that's why uh there's only a couple here i got my wraith marked edition of sword of kaigen the kickstarter by uh ml wong here a very good book, uh, but the edition is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's one of those things where when you, you pay that much for a Kickstarter, and I, I said I, I could I could support about two Kickstarters a year, but I want to kind of do it for authors, you know, that you weren't for certain they were going to be able to get funded, you know. Now, obviously, this one got funded really, really quick, but I, you know, I said I haven't read it yet. It's an independent author. Uh, sure, I'll go ahead and go along with that one. And uh, it's even better when the book turns out to be really good. So I did enjoy the book read last month, read from this edition because I don't have it on digital. And uh, I was very nervous the whole time I was reading it. But again, guys, I mean, Wraith Mark, they just do incredible, incredible work here. So if you've been interested in it and you missed this Kickstarter, well, good luck trying to track it down on eBay because I'm sure it will go for a pretty, pretty penny here. It's going to be a nice, nice addition to my shelf. And of course, guys, uh, it's whenever he puts out a new book, Stephen King gets bought. I mean, that's just how it goes. I didn't read Holly yet. Uh, I don't know. I don't have it uh, scheduled yet. But it's Stephen King, so I don't imagine it'll be uh, you know that much longer from right now. It's just nothing that I felt like I needed to put straight to the front of my list, just because I'm kind of exhausted with the Holly character, to be honest. And uh, some of the content matters. It's like that's not what I want to read about right now. But you know, I've heard I've heard mixed to positive. I've heard it's got some things that are very very annoying, like King tends to do, which is fine. I, I can get past all that kind of stuff. But I've heard the story does actually get really good once you get past all the uh, preachy things. And that's that, That's fine by me. So with, with King, at this point in his life, like I said, 
at this age, if he's still putting out content that's worth time, it's not just paycheck reads, that's awesome. That's all you can ask for from the old man at this point. But that's all I got, guys. I do have a ton of stuff I received this month from some authors. So what I always say about this, guys, is I don't know a ton about these. So what I will do is I will drop a link down below so you can look them up if you want to know more. And I, I encourage you to please give them a look and uh, try to support some of these self-published authors because as I always say, guys, at one point in time, all those authors we love today were self-published or looking to get published or trying to chase their dreams. And I always encourage that. First up, guys, this is Rise of the Mages by Scott Drakeford. Nice hardcover there. This one is, and now this one, uh, uh, Carl actually sent this, Carl Lewis Astrobody. He actually sent me the ARC before, and he said he just wanted to send me the hardcover now that it has had an official release, the Undying Apotheosis. Very, very pretty cover, and a very handsome uh, hardcover there. This one is uh, by Tyler Jolly and Jolene Perry. This is Infinity Charge. It kind of looks like that Ogja movie that uh, the guy who did Parasite made. I can't think of the director's name right now. We just watched The Host the other night. It was really good. Uh, this is The Amber Minher by Jonathan Pruitt. Again, guys, I encourage you, please, to uh, check those links down below. Uh, this one had a nice note. Uh, First-time author, The Droid, by, I'm, I'm sorry if I butcher your name, Mayank Sinha, I believe. Mayank Sinha, Sinha, Sinha. Very quick read, looks like. Uh, this is from C.J. Weiss. This is Secrets Gnaw at the Flesh. With a title like that, I'm assuming it is a horror book. Uh, nice note. Had some uh, interesting cards. They're almost like, sort of like survival tips or something like that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, uh, again, check those links, guys. Uh, the Work of the Restless Nights by M. Weald wrote me a nice note on graph paper. You guys remember graph paper? Is that still a thing? That's all thing. I don't know. I went back to school when I was 37. We weren't using graph paper, so I don't know. I don't know if that's still a thing. Uh, the Devil's League by Jake Kamara. I almost said Chimera. <laughs> Jake Kamara. And the writing's like somewhat upside down. I don't know. I had to use the spine actually to make sure I was getting that right. And this one is Orson the Great by Colm McEwen. Kind of almost looks like The Prestige or something. You guys remember The Prestige? It's a kick ass movie. Very underrated movie if you haven't seen it. And these is a pair uh, from the Battle Brothers series by Casey Hollingshead. This is the Witch Hunter and the Captain. Get you a better look because these covers are quite pretty. To what I said, the biggest thing I've noticed since I started doing this channel on some self-published releases is the cover art has improved tenfold, man. It's just it's just awesome, awesome stuff. I've got a bunch more here. Now, this one, actually, I was on a live stream with, gosh, I forget who it was with. But P.L. Stewart was in the comments, and I just I, I made a joke, and I hope it came off as a joke, that, uh, hey, I was the only person that P.L. hadn't sent his books to. And he immediately said, oh, I'm going to send them right to you. And I, I again, in the thing, I was just, I was being amusing, but I, when I just kept thinking about it, I, I hope I didn't come off as a jerk. So uh, I, I hope that I didn't, and P.L. said that I did not, and he sent me all three of his books in the Drowned Kingdom, and he wrote me, whoa, sorry about that. And he wrote me a really, really nice letter. And uh, it's just, again, the guy just is one of the most consummate professional people that I've met since I've started doing this. And it just makes me want to read his books even more. So, uh, PL, thank you so much. Your books are gorgeous. I promise, even though I just threw one on the floor, <laughs> it's okay. See, it's okay. And PL, super, super awesome guy. I think I first uh, met him when he was doing the um, those long conversations over on Steve Talks Books. But an uh, awesome, awesome guy. And I kind of also got introduced to him by Philip Chase, who sent me book number three in his series. And I just, I got to see how proud I am of Philip. Uh, it's one of those things where you would think that that could just be something that you just kept as a pipe dream your whole life. And he went for it and he released all three books this month to critical acclaim. Everybody seems to love these. I've still only read book number one, but it is going to be something that I, I do get to eventually because I really did enjoy book number one. And Philip, again, one of the classiest guys out there, one of the greatest human beings, and he also, shocking to no one, turned out to be a really, really great author. And three for three on these covers, Philip. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, I've heard a lot about these. Uh, John's very, very cool. We talk on Twitter a lot, but he sent me, John Palladino, he sent me The Trials of Ashmount and Buzzer's Ball, these awesome hardcovers, because he sent me the, the paperback of this, I think when it was still, you know, there was only like 100 copies available out there. But now he sent me these awesome, awesome hardcovers that, I mean, it's just... 
Check this out, man. These are so cool. Oh, those are stunning, John. And I heard you haven't made audiobooks because they're very, very expensive. I know a guy who works cheap. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I actually don't know what goes into all that. I've just heard that audiobooks aren't cheap and a lot a lot more authors are starting to do them uh, you know, on their own. First time author, she's one of my patrons and she's an awesome person. We we talk constantly. Uh, I don't want to use her full name because she's using, you know, initials on the front here, A P. Tabor, she released her debut novel, The Chimera Project. She actually had a book signed today. Ooh, see that catch? Uh, she sent me a really, really nice letter. And, and I just got to say thank you so much for that letter. Because even though we've talked for the past few years, uh, this the things that she said was just it, right here. I really do appreciate what you said. And, and don't think that that kind of stuff falls on deaf ears. It means the world to me to get a letter like that. So thank you so much. And, and congratulations for, uh, for making your, your debut novel a big, big success. I'm, I'm just, I'm thrilled for you. I'm very, very excited. Uh, Shauna continues to just be awesome uh, because her covers are stunning. The Words of Kings and Prophets is book number two in her series. I think she's actually getting quite a following because I did see that Mark Lawrence tweeted with this picture with his breakfast. So I think he was actually already reading her book. So uh, she seems to be having some serious success. And uh, Shauna, Excellent author, but I just got to say, guys, in case you don't know, listen to any interview with, with, with Shauna, the most dreamy accent you've ever heard in your life. Not even kidding. You'll fall in love. You'll fall in love. And lastly, uh, this is from the Roosevelt Saga by Michael Schultes. I hope I'm saying your name right, Michael. Uh, books number four and five. He'd already sent me three, one, two, and three before. But apparently he keeps on just pumping them out, man. You guys are machines. You guys write so damn fast. It's impressive. But I want to thank all the authors who sent me something this month. This is amazing, amazing amount of books that I think I've, I've never gotten this many from authors before. So uh, thank you so much. You are awesome. And I hope I can uh, point people in the right direction and they will check out some of these. But, uh, like I always say, guys, chase your dreams. You have my support. Okay, guys, how about some stuff from some publishers? Now, again, I want to say that sometimes this is a guess, guys. I, I know that sometimes we have correspondence back and forth. And I might forget that we've talked because if you guys knew how many emails I get about book reviews, you'd understand. So if you actually sent this by yourself, and that's not from the publisher, it's a complete accident. If it arrives without a note or a letter or anything and it comes straight from the publisher, I assume it's from the publisher. Philip Hemplow, this is exoteric. I don't think you can even see that, so so light. Very, 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 very pretty. Uh, this is The Vengeful, or A Vengeful Realm, book one of Scales of Balance by Tim Fasciola. Am I saying that right? If you're not Italian, I apologize for the way I just said that. Uh, Our Vitreous Womb. This is by Haldane B. Doyle. Very, very pretty green color. The Son of the Deathless by Nicholas Kotar. Almost looks like Sons of Darkness that just came out. Uh, this one's very strange, guys, because I, first of all, I had no idea that Garfield was a public domain thing. I had no idea, you know, the cartoon Garfield the Cat. Uh, apparently, there's a fan magazine of Garfield that is independent, and <laughs> this is like a collection of Garfield and different cosplay. <laughs> it's really weird. It's like he's dressed as Link, he's dressed as Mario. Uh, it's it's wild, and they sent me all kinds of stickers and stuff. Kids have been going wild for this because my kids do love Garfield, so it, it worked out quite well, but... Uh, very interesting. I had no idea something like this even existed. I'm going to show you guys some of these these drawings just to say it's it's very cool. It's just very random. I had no idea that Garfield was still this popular. I thought that was something that was kind of somewhat partially popular when I was younger, but I had no idea it was still so popular that there's a fan magazine that mixes it with other stuff. It's it's crazy. It's really good art too. I mean, wow. Who knew? Who knew that Garfield was this popular? And again, like I said, I had no idea that Garfield was in the public domain. So that's uh, you learn something new all the time. So thanks for that. That's very neat. Uh, Androne, this is by Dwayne Worrell. I did actually speak to your publicist, I believe, a few times. Uh, Daniel Thomas Valente, this is The Sins of Kings. I don't know how many times I can say these covers are pretty, but just, I just can't get over it. How, 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 how much cover art has improved for independent releases? Nick Stevenson, The Nether Geist, or Just Nether Geist, book number one. That looks a little scary. And lastly, I Am Eurist, book number one, The Stone Age by David Spark. 
So again, thank you everyone. Thank you publishers. Uh, I also got some stuff from Bain guys, but I didn't open it yet. So uh, I had such a big, big haul this month that I just said, I'll do that one next month because I just, I don't have any more room on my desk here to put these. But uh, that leads me to um, just some stuff that some viewers have sent me. I talked about Ronald Malfi already. Well, Doug sent me a different one. He sent me Come With Me. I thought uh, Black Mouth was the most popular one. But when you look at like the uh, the number of times it's been reviewed on Amazon, this one comes up first and in and, and Goodreads, I believe. So maybe this one is more popular. I don't know. I just know that Ronald Malfi seems to be a very, very popular horror author right now. And with horror, I feel like it's very much word of mouth. Uh, as far as modern stuff goes, as to what gets really, really popular. And Ronald seems to have that on luck. So thank you for that, Doug. This one is from Chris in NYC. He said this book, Ascension, here by Nicholas Binge, is very Blake Crouch-like. So that's a way to get my attention. Obviously, uh, Blake Crouch, you know, for the longest time, it was like, hey, this book's like Michael Crichton. You should check it out. And it wasn't until I found Blake Crouch that I felt like that was finally app. So uh, hopefully this one can be another nice techno thriller author that I can get into. This was a congratulations from Brian on hitting 100,000 subscribers. He already got me the DC Comics art of Alex Ross. Well, he got me the companion, which is the Marvel Comics art of Alex Ross. In case you guys don't know, Alex Ross, one of the greatest comic book artists of all time, has worked for both of the big ones there. So, uh, you know, if you feel like you're one of those people who's like, oh, it's got to be Marvel or DC, Alex Ross is like, no, I like both. I like both. They both have the, you know, good paychecks. But uh, yeah, his work, obviously, his Spider Man work is some of the best ever. And I didn't take the plastic off yet, so it's hard for me to actually show it to you and show you some of the art. But just trust me, guys, Alex Ross does amazing art thank you brian i appreciate it so so much and uh, uh i don't i don't know what to say thank you this is this is a, a, a lovely gift i appreciate it got a couple of kind of off the wall things i guess you say i mean not really first i got my card from judy that i always get my pen pal out in california thank you so much you continue to be awesome i gotta get these um he keeps sending me starbucks gift cards i needed to go up there and just have like a a big old breakfast there one day because i haven't been actually for quite a while this is from uh carly and greg they run an etsy store called jolly house i hope i'm saying that right but they do uh they basically say you know hey we appreciate what you do instead of sending you books we thought we'd send you something because you know you're a sports fan we're sports fans too and they sent me these really awesome custom-made coasters and no matter how i show this to you guys you're never going to see how cool it is they're like 3d they're wood burned and they're like in, in, embossed, I guess you'd say. I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a NRG Stadium, the Houston, Texas Stadium, and Minute Maid Park, where the Astros play. And these are amazing. This is incredible, incredible work. I'm going to link their Etsy store because, guys, you've got to buy these for your favorite teams because these are are amazing. I mean, this is incredibly intricate work. I mean, I can't believe how much went into this. I hope it focuses so you guys can see this. This is so stunning. Yes, I know you hate the Astros. Yeah, ho, ho, ho. Okay, good for you. I got it already. Hey, 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 I got, got something for you guys. Okay, there we go. And I got one last one. This is obviously the biggest one here. Uh, this uh, I talked about last month where I got the One Piece gifts from the Mystery Viewer. Uh, and I got those first two box sets. Well, uh, two viewers have actually got together to get me the other two. Uh, Ryan actually sent me box set number three here. I believe this is number, this is number three. Uh, 47 through 70. Yes, I don't know what this arc is called. but and This box set's called. But he got me box set number three of One Piece. And then the same mystery viewer who calls himself or herself YouTube Algorithm sent me box set number four. So I have all of the actual box sets that are available right now. And that is the first uh, 90 volumes. So I think I'm quite set for some time. Again, I can't say thank you enough to the One Piece fans. I was so, so wrong about that fandom. I cannot say I'm sorry enough. And I cannot say thank you enough because you guys have just blessed me with you know, $500 worth of manga. It's amazing. It's amazing how compassionate that fan base is. And I really, really let a few bad eggs, apparently, uh, form my opinion of that fandom. And that was wrong on my behalf. I should not have done that. And uh, yeah, I've had nothing but incredible support since I started reading One Piece. I mean, I, I think, honestly, of all the manga fandoms that I've encountered, they've actually been the most patient. Uh, all the other ones are like, you know, F all this other stuff you're doing. Just read this and review that. And I was like, I'm never going to do that. But I'm also getting the messages, guys. People being like, oh, don't become the One Piece channel. Or I'll have to stop watching. Guys, I, 
I do like one or two manga reviews a year. If it really bothers you that much, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, I, there are other things I like to do besides just uh, you know read books because I have loved comics since I was a kid. And manga has kind of reawakened that love because you know the content still matters apparently overseas, whereas Western comics, I don't know if that's the most important thing anymore. But that's a topic for another time. So uh, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you guys completing that set for me. I'm going to have a while here, I think, before box set number five comes out. But by then, hopefully I'll be as big a fan as you and I'll be ready to shell out the cash for that on day number one to keep this set going. Right now, my biggest problem is where in the heck am I going to put them? <laughs> so thank you again, guys, for everything. It's been an amazing, amazing month. I want to thank everyone, authors, publishers, and viewers alike that sent me stuff this month. It's amazing to me still that you guys ever think about me whenever you're like, hey, how do I how do I spread the, the, spread the love here and send something to someone else? I, I'm, I'm just so thankful that you guys continue to think of me. But I would love to know what you guys got in the month of December or September. September. We're not in December yet. In September, or did you get any new books to your home library? Why don't you drop in the comments and let me know what you think about any of these. That's always fun to talk about. So hit me in the comments, guys, and I will talk to you there. <laughs>